Just a quick uh, reminder, everyone, neither me nor Chaotic are experts when it comes to myths or history about different cultures. We try our best to get the general feeling. And with this episode on the Jinn, there's a lot of branching paths in it. I tried my best to get the research done and cover like a general aspect of everything. So with that, I hope you enjoy the show. So chaotic. I got a question to start off. What does Barbara Eden, Robin Williams, and Will Smith all have in common? What? Yes. I don't want to guess. I don't know. I couldn't even possibly begin to know. We we talked about Will Smith last episode. Okay, but what what about Will Smith specifically? Mm -hmm. What do, what do him, Robin Williams, and Barbara Eden have in common? They've seen aliens. Possibly, but that's for <laughs> the They all play genies. They've all been genies? Yes. Okay. Now I see, I don't actually know the first one. Barbara Eden is uh, I Love Genie. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. Or I Dream of Genie. Oh, yeah, I've never seen that. I, I know Robin Williams was the one in the original Aladdin, and I know that Will Smith is the new one. Yeah, I dream of Genie's Genie was back in the 60s, so. Yeah, I'm not educated in that. Hello and welcome, listeners, to the Monsters Miss Mayhem podcasts. Today's episode is about genies, also known as Jin and Jinnies, and a couple other different names. Would you like us to? Would you like to regale us, chaotic, with your every man knowledge? My every man knowledge. Yeah, it was just what I thought of. <clears throat> My every yeah. man knowledge. Huh? What does that even mean? Like common knowledge that every person has about the monster. Uh, about genies? Yes. Um, I guess like the most common one is they usually come with three wishes. Um, and you can't wish for more wishes. Um, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> they're usually inside of an object like a lamp or I've seen some that are in like little teacups, um, like the little like sugar things, as long as it has a lid kind of thing. Um, generally, you have to find that magical object and rub that object to get the genie to appear to grant you the wishes. Um, the genies tend to be shackled to that magical object, kind of like a prison. They're not allowed to leave um, unless their master frees them, which I don't know if that's just in Aladdin or if that's like a like a universal thing. Um, uh, they're very powerful. They're some of the most powerful beings in the universe. Um, they have cosmic powers, you know, as Jeannie lets us know. Um, itty bitty living space. Um, I think that's like the basics to get started. You would think with cosmic power... They could, you know, Doctor Who their way into their vessels. You would think. Where it's much bigger on the outside than the inside. Yeah. Or Pokeball. Certain theories. Yeah, that's a pretty common knowledge for genies that I've seen. That is the more Western view of genies. Newer Western view of genies and gins. Would you like to guess how old genies are? They, I'm just, they have to be ancient, like almost like, it feels like they'd almost be like older than the world ancient. 
And with that, you are pretty close to accurate. Because in the reading I have done, Jins, which is the first name for genies, are from uh, the like Arabian area. And in the Quran, it has been stated that the God made angels out of light. Then he decided to make, he made angels of light on a Wednesday. Then he made gins out of smokeless fire on a Thursday. And then after he made gins, it took him another thousand to 1500 years to make Adam out of clay on a Friday. So gins are older than people. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. And in gin society, they are pretty similar to humans because they just live their life. They got to eat. They got to drink. They got to uh, they can have fun. They have their own free will. So unlike they can choose whether to follow the God or choose not to. And that's all their free choice. There was a little disagreement between Allah, the God, and the Jinns because the Jinns became too prideful, uh, disobedient, not listening to what he has to say. And so when man got made... Adam was in charge of, was put over charge of the jinns. And since they didn't obey him, Allah sent the angels down to earth to wipe out the jinn. So some of them got wiped out altogether. And others went into hiding. Some of them, uh, vowed to serve Allah in the beyond that side. So you, you got good gins, neutral gins, and evil gins. Gins of all spectrums of Naturally, naturally. Since, you know, free will tends to do that to creatures. Right, valid. You know, you like you can choose your own chaotic path. Yeah. Like D and D. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd imagine gins fall all of that on that same where the heck it's called chart where it's like the lawful good chaotic evil like all of that yeah there's much more the religious side of to this story that I'm not an expert in but other than just religious views there's a cultural impact as well and with jinns, just their power-wise, they have able to manifest items, create items, grant wishes, as you said. There really ain't no laws to the wishes, though. As in, you can pretty much do anything. You can grant wish for more wishes, grant more wishes. I. Uh, but it's not really just wish granting. Usually you got to fool genies into granting your wishes. Or they'll try and twist them and turn them around on you. It really depends what type of gin you get. 90% of the time, gins are also not trapped in lamps or bottles. They're also just walking freely around us. Because their natural state of ability their natural state of being is invisible and formless. But even though they're formless, you can still interact with their space. And they don't like that. So let's just say you're hanging out gaming and you throw a blanket back 
off you onto the couch. Well, this is a new home you're in, or a really old home you're in, and not used to anything. And you throw it back to a space, and it happens to hit an invisible gin. They take offense to that, even though they're the ones invisible. That seems like, you know, like a them thing. Like, y'all are, we can't see you. We don't know. And they can do anything from causing you a little bit of disturbance, like moving your furniture around on you, rearranging it, to grabbing you and throwing you across the room. They may even manifest if they're angry enough. Jinns also have the ability to transform into things, as we have seen in Aladdin. But they prefer transforming into snakes and dogs. Those are their preferred forms. But many Jinn also like to have a mixed form of animals. Whether it's like a dog head. Usually it's a humanoid body with an animal's head. In, in Jinn society. Because Jinns do have their own, you know, little culture themselves over, and I believe it's called Calf, Cough, Q-A-F. That's where they reside. They're in a little dimension, from what I heard. Yes. And they do have their own judicial system for if a Jinn has been killed. Because it is not impossible to kill a Jinn. And people are not... Like laws against killing each other? Killing each other or being killed killed by a human. If a human kills a jinn, then they are subject to jinn law. So, when a jinn is killed, which it can be, it can only be killed in its transformed form. Because when a jinn transforms into... An animal, like if a djinn transforms into a snake, it has all the weaknesses of a snake. So they take on the weakness of their form. Yes. So if you're a gardener and you kill a snake out in your garden, and it happens to be a djinn, the djinns will come for you to take you to court. But there is a caveat that... If a djinn is killed while transformed, the person who killed it cannot be found guilty. Okay, that's interesting. Is there a reason? Uh, I believe it was just because it was either Muhammad or Solomon decreed so. Hmm. I believe it was Muhammad. Because they just kept taking people. Because when you go into Jin court, you don't physically leave, but you mm-hmm. mentally leave to go to Jin court. Oh. Oh. So it's just like up there. Yeah. Because this also leads into people say that Jin's cause mental illness and like seizures because of they've been Jin possessed. Because they can possess people. There is a way to get them out of you, though. Having someone recite verses from the Quran that'll expel the jinn from you. Okay. Most times. That's interesting. Sounds a little painful, but. You mentioned a lamp and a teacup sealing the genie. Right, like objects that can keep them like in. Which is also true to part of the history of the jinn. As in, you could capture one and force it into servitude by sealing it inside an object, ring, a lamp. But usually only high-ranking or high like strong sorcerers can do this. And if you fail to seal them right away, you pretty much done for. I love that for us. Then the one who said to first kind of seal the way 
Jin is Solomon, who has his own whole you know, story. Uh, he ended up having a magical ring that he could use to seal Jin's away into like bottles or force him into servitude. Solomon actually used the ring to command an army of an army, a bunch of Jin, to build the first uh, temples. And then Solomon kept sealing Jin. He ended up with the title Demon Hunter, pretty much. To which he nearly died. Then he decided, yeah, I'm not going to do that no more. And continued to live an old life by not hunting demons. But he had a collection of gins that he had already sealed away in bottles with like uh, lead caps on them. I shall give you three tries to guess. What do you think he did with these bottles of genies? I am terrified to guess. Did he like keep them? Nope. Did he try and burn them? Right. Did he bury them? Right. I hate it here. Nope. He did the only sensible thing. He took all the jars when he captured them, and he proceeded to chuck them into the ocean, where they floated away to different continents, more than likely. For some unexpected fisherman to open. That's um, wild to me. Which might be how jinns traveled the world. Because even though they're a jinn, doesn't mean they need another jinn in order to reproduce. So they're asexual? I mean, with their power, they probably could be. But okay. they can mate with humans. Oh. Huh? Oh, I gotcha. So they they can they they don't have to stay within the gen area. Yep. Yeah, because they can take on their own human form. But in one thing I've seen with the possibility of having gen kids is a male gen cannot get a human female pregnant. Okay. But a male but human the reverse. Gets, I was yeah. about to say. Yeah, the male gen, the male human can get a female gen pregnant because male gens do not have sperm. It, and that's because of like the infernal cogs that like the cosmic cogs that like run them, not I the natural. Because they're made out of fire, probably. Even though they. Maybe they just don't have the internals, but they still require the weaknesses of their transformed state. Or maybe they just do it in their genie form. There's many unknowns. Interesting. Just like there are many types of fey folk, fey beings, there's also many types of jinn. Which some people say jinns are fey, just in different origins. Because they have very similar powers and abilities. The main cat I guess categories of Jin are you got your Jin, your Jin your Jennies, which are like normal genies. Then you got your Ifrits, which are more fiery fiery, infernal type. Uh they're mean. Uh but they like to try and make deals and they're noted for their strength and cunning. They're usually the ones written about in all the stories of things being bad. Oh, we love that. Mm -hmm. Then there's the Merid, which is said to be the largest and most powerful djinn. Like more magical power they provide. And they're the ones that grant mortals wishes. And you can either get them to grant your wishes through battle, through imprisonment, or just a bunch of flattery. Depends on the gin, really. But it kind of breaks it down even further for possible categories of gin. It's like a ghoul is also a gin, but they're shape-shifting, cannibalistic 
uh, feed on the flesh of human beings, Jin. There are Hins, H-I-N-N, which have a closer appearance to the dogs, to animals. They prefer being in the animal form, being in more closer contact with them. There's the John, J-A-N-N. They, they prefer living in the deserts and taking on the forms of whirlwinds and white camels. And they kind of like people. They're more open-minded about them. They, they neither dislike or like travelers or people, but if they do like you, they'll probably leave you alone, not make whirlwinds go through your camp at night if you're traveling through the desert. Another form of the jinns is the palace, P-A-L-I-S. They are vampiric foot lickers. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> they would be thriving in the year of our Lord and Savior 2023. Thriving. In 2022. But uh, they are very low intelligent and easily outwitted. I mean, yeah, all you gotta do is pop out a foot and they're like dazed. They're they're just lost to the sauce. Yeah, they uh they like to wait till you're laying down, jump up and start licking the soles over your feet and draining the blood as they do. What the f <laughs> This has come about with people why people will sleep uh feet to feet. Or uh, have their feet under each other's heads while camping in the desert. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's three more. So we got the Shik, S H I Q Q. They are more like half formed gins. And Salat, S I little apostrophe L A T. They are the smartest of gins and expert shapeshifters, usually blending in with human society the best. Then the last one is a shaitan. Well, a shaitan is uh, like a devil, devil gin, which is usually given to the ty given to uh, Iblis, who is the one who refused to bow to Adam in the Islamic religion. And he then got tossed out and he has no powers other than the power of evil suggestions. So he can throw evil suggestions towards men, women, jinns. He, he makes more evil. So he's a little shit. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Can you guess Satan? Satan? <laughs> it's like you're it's like the Satan we have at home. Yeah. Which does the ex they both do the exact same job. They both uh, pass uh, evil suggestions. Uh, and there is also a special name for a half Half human, half gins. I do not remember the name off the top of my head. In D and D, it's Ganassis. Yeah, Ganassis are pretty cool. That's kind of all the info I had. So, would you like to move on to media? As you said, Ra. Genies are in Aladdin the Disney version. But they are also in the original Aladdin, which Disney also stole and Disneyified from the book 1001 Nights. Have you read of 1001 Nights, Chaotic? I know you're a big reader. I have not read 1001 Nights. I would suggest it as a light reading. Even if it's just to read Aladdin or Solomon's story, but there's a lot of genies in 
those stories. I also learned something new. Did you know Aladdin was Chinese? That feels wrong. Yeah. Considering he, he, he is of technical Arabic ascent. Only the Disney one he is. Hmm. In the original Thousand One Nights, the whole Aladdin story took place in China and with a Chine, it was a Chine, uh, cave in China he went into. Hmm. Salt was Chinese. The magician character in it was not Jafar. He wasn't the consultant of the Sultan. But it was a guy from North Africa that came. It's like, hey, I know your dad. Hmm. We're brothers. Oh. Would Creepy. you like to go get this lamp for me? <laughs> hey, I know your dad. You want to do some shit for me? Thanks. <laughs> and of course, he convinced him to do it. The magician gave Aladdin a ring. Then Aladdin ended up trip. Caught, he got the Aladdin got the lamp. Uh, the cave sealed up on him. He started rubbing his hands together. He rubbed the ring. A genie popped out of the ring. Or he got out of the cave and got home and laid it, his lamp down on his desk. And then his mother was going around cleaning and cleaned the lamp and a genie popped out. So then they had two genies. Then, yes, also the, the original Aladdin was not an orphan. Wild. Then Aladdin, like the princess, went to the sultan. They did the thing. He got engaged to the princess. But he could not be uh, the magician figured out that Aladdin had the lamp. But in order to he ended up buying the lamp that has the genie off of his mother. So now the magician has the lamp genie by his Aladdin's mom sold it to him. And before Aladdin could consummate the marriage to make it an official marriage, the magician poofed. The not Jasmine princess away to Africa. Aladdin still had the genie ring. That genie could not undo another the other genie's magic because it was more powerful. So Aladdin had to track from China to Africa to get Jasmine back, where they ended up killing the magician. Then they were supposed to live happily ever after, but they did not because the magician's brother showed up. Uh, and then so he had the magician's brother dressed as a priestess and nearly tricked uh, the non-Jasmine Jasmine into giving him the lamp since he was dressed as a holy woman. But the genie's like, hey, no. That guy's evil. So they just killed him and then that was the end of the story. There's probably what, a, you know, what an end. There's probably more uh, context clues in there if you read the actual story. You like read the whole thing. Yeah. This is a couple other things that genies are in. Where it's like, I love genie, which is the 1960s Barbara Eden show. Uh, Aladdin live action with Will Smith. This is a story called Children of the Lamp. He is in Monster... There are genies in Monster High, Ninjago, Genshin Impact, Supernatural, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon. They got at least four Pokemon based on genies. They got Landorus, Thunderous, Torna Tornadus, and Hoopa. There's a form of gins in Clash of the Titans that I like a lot. Okay. They're very cool. And they face off, one of them faces off with Medusa. Who's stronger, Medusa or Jin? Technically the Jin, because Medusa can't turn him to stone. True, because he just shapes Because he doesn't have head. normal internals. Yeah. He has like an internal uh, fire and cogs. So it's really neat to see. And they're like, in that movie, they're like medically advanced and stuff. So obviously they have a lot of healing power. 
um, a lot of like so they're not as much genie. They're not like make wishes genies, but they're the, like the ancient gins with like the powers and the cosmic, yeah. you know, containment in their body and stuff like that. It's really neat. And of course, there you got gins and genies in D and D. D and D splits them up through elements because you got genies. Which is air, they're air elementals and they're usually chaotic good. You got the Dao, D A O, which are earth elementals, they're neutral evil. You get Ifritis, which are fire elementals, also lawful evil. Then there's the Merids, which are water elementals, and they're chaotic neutral. So if you go visit any of them, you usually want to visit the air elementals, the 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 Jennies, because There's cloud cities, and they can control gravity and such inside their cities. And they're less evil. Then they got Ganassi, the character class. They can also base it off of, like, your parent was a djinn, or your elemental. You get different elements. And many other more stories and fantasy type settings usually bring gins in at some point oh yeah then in 2009 there was a public opinion poll in pakistan that 89 percent of the population believe in the existence of gins interesting that's kind of all i got for written down media mayhem yeah. All right, where are you putting them in the high school? Where are you putting them in the high school at, Silver? In the high school? Mm-hmm. College, high school? College, high school, whatever. Where, where are you putting them in the status quo? I'm saying they're general student body. Just general student body, really? Yeah, because they can be... It's so hard to categorize them because they free will. They're not general evil, good. I guess if I had to generalize them, I'd say I'd have to put them in as Fred and George. Oh, that's fair. Fred and George is now their own category. Mm -hmm. The The mischief makers. Mischief makers. One does good mischief. One does insane mischief. Yeah. I can see that. They... Pr- play pranks in the student body. They'll get into fights with teachers. They'll overthrow the government just to reinstall just, it as the same government. It. Yep, I would have put them as band geeks. Band geeks, yeah, I could see. I, I put them as band geeks, not for their musical talent, because who knows if they even have any, but because I have met band geeks that are the nicest motherfuckers you'll ever run into in your entire life, and then I've run into ones that will literally just say something to make you cry. For no reason. So like the vast majority of them is just unhinged in both directions. Isn't that just people though? No. Band geeks are a different different breed. Anybody listening to this that's a band geek will know. They'll know. Ruby, when you listen to this, you call your brother and you're like, yup, she's right because I'm right. They're a different breed. Okay? I guess they could also be ag kids. Yeah, you guys are also a different breed. I didn't have to deal with that until junior year of high school. But as soon as I met y'all, wild and for no reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're nature spirits. Some of them like animals. They transform into animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you said, ag kids are crazy too. Cause I mm-hmm. know because I was an ag kid. Loud ones, you get the crazy ones, you get the calm ones. Genie's general mayhem would be high as they're invisible. They're easily offended. None of the stories usually end well or they end up with the genies just running away. We no longer have the means of capturing them because we no longer have Solomon's ring around that anybody's aware of. I was going to say bold of you to assume that it's not somewhere. <laughs> I said as anybody's aware of it. Same with the process of how to capture them. So they'll be pretty much just running free and normal. They might 
Oh, I just remembered. Uh, Chaotic, have you watched Miss Marvel? No. You haven't watched Miss Marvel yet? No. I'm very behind on all TV shows. Okay, well, it's six episodes in mm-hmm. Disney. Mm-hmm. And it goes into gins. Oh. Because, yeah, I'm not going to spoil nothing. But, yeah. I don't mind spoiling Aladdin because, you know, it's from <laughs> It's been really out for, old. you know, ever, but yeah. I think most of the, the gins would stay out of our business. But there would be those few omnipotent Efreets, probably, that try to make deals and such. What do you think general chaos would be? How much do you think they would cause to... I don't think there'd be a bunch. Like, outside of the... I mean, again, with the um, with the freedom, it would kind of depend on the gen. Um, I think it'd kind of be just kind of like dealing with humans. Okay, my next question, mayhem-wise. What do you think uh, the number of people looking to have sex with gins would be? Pretty high. We're all weird. Pretty high. Would it be a positive thing that they... Male gins can't mate with or have offspring with females, humans? <laughs> I'm going to be real. As a femme represent, representing human, that's like a plus. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I feel like, unfortunately for human males, there would be a higher desire for the gin males from femme representing humans. Which is... Very acceptable. Yeah. So, you know. Um, but on the same same spectrum, I feel like a lot of I think I feel like it's human nature to seek something greater than yourself. So I feel like a lot of humans would really be kind of searching for a gen. Um, you know, not everybody, but a, a lot of us would be. And there's a lot of us that are weird out there that have, you know, been waiting for something like that our whole life. So, you know, there's gonna be a lot of us just waiting on that. Yeah, there's, uh, I think this is one of our first creatures that have been actively confirmed to be able to breed with humans. Besides, because the Leon, Leon, she doesn't because she just drains your life force. We haven't done anything vampire werewolf related. Medusa used to be human, but I don't think the physiology, physiology can really count. I'm trying to think of any humanoid ones we've done. Yuki Ono's, their spirits. Can you think of any other ones we've done that might have a chance? Um, no, and I'm not the person to ask because I would be trying to do things that aren't supposed to mate with humans. So, you know. <laughs> I guess we'll wrap things up with that. Dab. We shall thank our patrons of Ruby, Mage, Mondi, and continue on with chaotic and any of her news chaotic has zero news there's no news thank you for listening to the monsters miss and mayhem podcast silver and chaotic take you into the depth of the lore and discuss how these legends could affect modern day society you can find us on apple Podcasts, spotify iHeartRadio, or almost any podcast service easiest to you dive into the depths of chaos with us every wednesday bar silver and chaotic not missing their scheduling and consider joining the podcast discord or twitter following for even more insider looks and even some D sessions if you'd like some extra special inside looks or even want to be a guest on the show, consider helping us via Patreon. Your help makes such a big difference to us both. Until next time, Mythics, you never know what kind of mayhem you might get into.